I often say for you and your listeners, people don't quit jobs, they quit people. You know, we have a, generally speaking, Americans have a, a tolerance for a lot of things. We're forgiving, we're forgiving people. We're people, you know, I've come to, in my time working with leaders and people of organizations, people will endure low pay, difficult working conditions at times, maybe a dilapidated building, maybe this, this computer is not the latest model that I have at my desk that has been given to me by my job to work on long hours. You know, there are times of the job where it's just a grind and you're just, man, you're pushing through frustration over budget procedures and I don't quite have enough money in my particular department or in my pocketbook. For, but here's what I found. If people are serving alongside someone they respect, working along someone that says she gets me as a leader, I am valued by him as a leader. All those things, not that they're not important, they become less important because people mm -hmm. say, you know what, this conditions or these conditions may be temporary, but man, this person is all in with me. I'm all in with them. I'm for the mission of the company, for the mission of the organization. The ebb and flows of it, I can hang, I can tolerate, but uh, it's the dysfunction of leaders as relates to leading their people. I'm good with being in relationships with people where we both have dysfunctions in terms of who we are as people. Like we're all fragile, we're, we're finite beings. Uh, another colleague of mine used to say, we're all hypocrites in transition. Here's what I'm not <laughs> cool with. I'm not cool with being in relationships that are dysfunctional. So one is about me. Look, man, I got my idiosyncrasies. I got my issues, my struggles, my hurts, my harms, my habits. I accept that. I see that. I embrace that. Get the totality of you as a person. I'm good with that. It's the dysfunction in our relationship. I think that is the, where the rubber meets the road for so many people. And let's face it, you know, democracy and, and, and a free flowing economy like ours, where people have options, people have options. Mm -hmm. And those options are often time. I'm all for the open market because with that, it, people have choices. And now it is about things like those intangibles, best practices, and having people that feel valued. It's not just about what's in the manual of our employee handbook, right? Let's take COVID, for example. Like there were pivots and adjustments that needed to be made in the time of a global pandemic that none of us could account for. So what we needed is, and what we need still are employers to be empathetic, to be patient. I mean, you know, I tell people sometimes we think sitting in a staff or team meeting that the obstacle is the issue we're discussing. And as a leader, we can't see why we're getting so much headway to advance forward this issue and so much pushback. And what I often have concluded in my time working in law, with law enforcement officers, working with people in the entertainment industry, working with presidents of universities and different nonprofit organizations is sometimes the issue is not about what we're discussing. The issue is I just found out my mom has a positive COVID test. <laughs> I'm worried about her breathing, you know, or I'm here at this job. And oh, by the way, the local school district has decided to amend their policies with regards to mask mandates and also online. That means stay at home for more for the kids. That means I got to account for my son or daughter being taken care of. And so when employees show up at your, their place of work, they're bringing the totality of who they are to that space. And I just think in 2022, man, leaders have to be mindful of that. I want to have now. In most instances, your business, you know, people need to earn their, their keep. I get that. But I just think leaders, it behooves them to be more tolerant, to be Doris Kearns Goodwin, the great presidential historian said the number one quality that a leader has to have is empathy. Yeah. Empathy. And empathy, it has a texture. Maya Angelou, the great poet said, people may forget what you say, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And so when I think of leaders, I think of leaders having tremendous sway. A leadership has texture. It has smell. Leadership has a presence, has a tone. And my late seminary president, the great William Cruz, Bill Cruz would say often, Goody, sometimes leadership is best defined in its absence. Mm. And we certainly 
uh, in the last few years have seen what happens when leadership is void in the moment. It can literally yeah. cost lives. 